AI agents are everywhere. Everyone is hyped about automating tasks, solving problems, basically making life easier, right? But there is one kicker. There is one huge problem holding them back. And it is not some futuristic sci-fi issue. It is happening right now. In this video, I'm going to break down why people are not ready to put AI agents in production. And there are a bunch of other things related to AI agents from the recent Langchain report. To start with, I don't want you to wait. To start with, what is the biggest limitation of why people are not putting AI agents in production? The very first reason, like the top reason is performance quality. 41% of people said that because they do not trust the performance quality of AI agents, they don't want to put it in production. And it is like mostly the case with small companies where they do not trust what the AI agents are producing. And the second biggest reason is cost. Third biggest reason is safety concern and then latency and everything else. Mainly for small companies, performance quality outweighs, far outweighs the other consideration with 45.8% citing this is a primary reason for them not putting AI agents in production. I mean, like literally automating. For example, you would have seen a lot of YouTube tutorial that says, okay, you can automate newsletter, you can automate job application. Those things work perfectly fine for a simple YouTube video. But when you productionize it, there are edge cases that you have to handle. And most of the times um, people still believe these AI agents are not 100% up to the mark. If you are like somebody who likes to take risk, then that's a totally different topic altogether. But if you're running a business, you do not want to take that risk. And that's why people are not putting this in production. The other interesting insight from the Langchain report is that 78% of people who filled in the survey have a plan to deploy an agent, like to put it in production. So even though right now they are not doing it, they want to do it. So out of 100 people who filled in the survey, 78 people are developing an agent with plan to put it in production. Right now, only 51% uh, people seem to have who filled in the survey. This is a very important thing because you typically would naturally assume that there is a confirmation bias or that there is a selection bias, which if you have studied survey methodology, the first thing that you should avoid to have a fair survey and a fair report. But as you can see here, the Langchain report says that the, the respondents of the survey only 51% have an agent in production and 78% wants to put it in production. So if you're somebody who is betting on agents, who, who is uh, actually upskilling in agents or trying to build agentic solutions or trying to apply for freelancing projects for agentic solution, I think the future is quite bright for you. And uh, this is one important insight that I can actually say. And if you're wondering what are the use cases where people want to put AI agents, surprisingly or unsurprisingly, Research and summarization forms 58.2% of the cases. This is basically based on what is today possible. And I have personally worked on projects where people love AI agents for research and summarization. Imagine you have to hire an intern and the intern has to go to like 10 different or 20 different websites and they have to collect information, come back, summarize, write an email, send it to you, write a report and send it to you. You don't need the 10 different interns now. You can like write 10 different AI agents and they can do it for you. So research and summarization is the biggest use case. Personal assistance, productivity task, for example, like summarizing your email, writing your email, improving your productivity. The third one is customer service. I would have probably hoped to see customer service at the top, given that AI agents are really good. And honestly, I think that is also where you have a lot of improvements to be made. For example, a lot of customer support systems, like when you see online internal YouTube videos, it basically assumes that all you want is like somebody who can respond back to a user message. That's not how big companies work. You need to have some way to connect it to a CRM. You need to have some way to connect it to an ERP. It has to follow a script. It has to connect it to some kind of a web hook where it can collect information and give it back to the user. So customer support agents are not necessarily customer support chatbots, but they have to do more than what, you know, customer support chatbots do. Then code generation, data transformation and enrichment, interactive gameplay, storytelling, companionship. This is where like the AI girlfriend are uh, having like a virtual partner come into picture. And then there are other reasons. Another interesting insight from this survey is that, okay, um, what, what kind of things that uh, people are interested uh, to have more controls of agents? One, they want us like tracing observability. I think I've said this multiple times on this channel that observability and uh, this is probably one of the biggest areas in LLMs. A lot of people want to deploy LLMs. The infra is not very difficult at this point. You can go to services like Runpod, you can go to Microsoft Azure or different places, deploy it. 
but observability is one critical thing that people are lacking and uh, that is the kind of control that people would love to have even for llms and we can see from this survey that even for agents people like to have tracing and observability because you have to find out why something is happening and guardrails are the second one <laughs> you don't want to have a chatbot that will cause pr issue in terms of the company size and when you combine it with the agency controls you can see that mostly enterprise cares about observability and guardrails like almost like equally you can see the biggest delta here for small companies small companies don't care about guardrails that much but big companies actually do i've spoken to a lot of enterprises and one thing that they care about is do i have deterministic control over what the agent is going to say or no if it you don't have deterministic control they don't want to deploy the agent so guardrail is very important offline evaluation and online evaluations are there in terms of the companies that are doing agents really good cursor is at the top and then you have got perplexity and then you have got repelit these are the three companies that people who filled in the survey believe that uh, they have they, they have done agents really good like cursor perplexity repelit i've used all these three tools and uh, if i were to say that i would probably put perplexity somewhere at the top or even like repelit at the top i'm 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 not sure how cursor is doing agents I mean I know it's LLM stuff I know it's rag but I wouldn't call it agent maybe like my definition of agents are quite different from what they do even like I wouldn't call like perplexity an agent because repelit is something that you can actually see that it is trying to do certain things it has an objective it is trying to fulfill the objective it creates a checkpoint it creates a memory so my definition of agent kind of fills in with repelit but with cursor and perplexity is not that much but there are certain things that perplexity does it pr pretty well like you can use it as a research tool especially if you've got the pro subscription you can pretty much use perplexity to write an article blog post newsletter um a lot of other things so perplexity is there not sure why cursor is there if they have missed any tool please let me know in the comment section with all these things if you are wondering where do people want to put agents into work the very first thing is a multi step task the second thing is automating a repeating task the third one is to do task routing and collaboration and the final one is the holy grail of everything which is to have human like reasoning ultimately if you want to have an agentic system i think this is the best time to start building multi agent system not just like single agent but a multi agent system that work collaboratively together to achieve a common goal with some kind of a memory and that can help humans automate certain task and i think this is what everybody should build at this point and this until you want to like go into yc like raise a lot of fund but if you are working towards you know making some money um, solve some problem then probably you should pick a task for example it could be like every day morning when i wake up i want to get an email where i want to read everything that i care about could be about weather news today's bunch of tweets could be about reddit summary but this is like the simplest thing that you can automate with ai and you can build on top of it so for this you can have like five different agents working together like a research agent coming up with an email sending it to you and then doing a lot of things and you can now take this further into not just a research agent there are a lot of things that you can do with agent but i would strongly encourage you to start with something very small and simple and then move forward and also give me some use cases where you are using agents i would love to learn from your ideas and then build on top of it see you in another video happy prompting